Welcome to Retro Bass and, and thank you for continuing with us on this little retro road show as we slowly but surely make our way to Northeast Florida. Well, if you are even a little bit of a fan of this show, you know how much a fan of this place I am. In fact, since I was first turned on to Bacon's Tackle in Shreveport, Louisiana by a bass and bud in the comments section many years ago, coming here has really been one of the highlights of this channel for me. This place is steeped in history and owner Michael Bacon is literally a walking encyclopedia when it comes to old school fishing tackle and in particular Louisiana lure builders. So needless to say, as I'm slowly trekking eastward, this pit stop was high on my list. Michael and his wife were kind enough to put me up in their family Airbnb last night in Shreveport and I woke up at the crack of dawn to get over here because I don't have a ton of time unfortunately, but I've got a long list of things I want to accomplish today at Bacon's. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin'. Well, night has fallen, and uh, there's nothing we can do about it. <laughs> Whew, just getting off the road after day one on my little trek eastward to Florida. Well, we spent a little bit more time at Dee's Tackle Box than I was planning on it, but definitely less time than I would have liked to have spent there. Totally could spend uh, two or three days out in East Texas with Dee and his crew. Man, what a pretty cool setup he's got going on there. And I think we really just scratched the surface of it with uh, that little walkthrough we did of his tackle cave. So I was getting out of Longview, Texas, and I shot a text over to Michael Bacon, who I'm planning to see tomorrow over at the tackle shop. And I asked him if he had any good suggestions on where I could safely park the retro wagon overnight in Shreveport. Well, <laughs> <laughs> he not only had a suggestion for it, he offered me use of his Airbnb. So that was a total shocker and um, this place is great. So yeah, I was planning on staying at the Hampton Inn and maybe sleep with one eye open to watch the old retro wagon. Instead, I get to live it up in luxury thanks to uh, my good buddy and Michael Bacon. So that's pretty awesome. I'm gonna hang out, I'm gonna crack Core's original and talk just a little bit about the game plan for tomorrow. As usually happens at Bacon's, minutes turn into hours and hours turn into days. It is literally a black hole of old school gold and I've gotta be careful that I don't spend too much time there because uh, I've gotta to get to Northeast Florida, hopefully by Thursday. I was trying to game plan out my final trip to Bacon's. There's definitely a few things that I hope to accomplish in the uh, short bit of time I'll get to spend with Michael Bacon in his most epic of tackle shops. And the first of which is uh, Michael Bacon makes and sells his very own Bacon Bullfrog baits. Last time I was there, I picked up one or two of these beauties. And especially considered I might not make it back to Bacon's for a little bit. If he's got any of these that are off the line and ready to be sold, I plan on scooping those up. This is a bait Michael makes using actual frog skin and this might just be about the prettiest custom lure I've ever seen. 
Last time I was there, I stumbled upon a neat little bait that was in a bin, unmarked, unhooked, and I picked up a few of them. I since did a little bit of online research and found out that this is a discontinued bait from Bass Buster, and it is a pretty sweet schooling bait. I've rigged it up sort of like I saw it in the catalog, and I plan to share the news of this with Michael Bacon, and probably pick up a few more of these to rig up myself. Recently, my Bass and Bud Mark Ng over at the Big O Connection stumbled upon something he knew I would be very excited about, and that is an original Fred C. Young Big O crankbait, but one of the, uh, we'll say, Fisher variety. You guys know me, I like to collect, but I definitely like to cast them, and I was so stoked when Mark told me he was gonna send, ho oh, oh, ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho, this big O my way, check that out. That is a gorgeous bait and it's a bait I actually plan to fish. Uh, the goal for me is to catch a bass on this. I'm not gonna beat this thing up too, too bad, but it does have a little lip damage and I'm gonna see if Michael has any suggestions on how to get this lip souped up so I can get it on the water and catch a fish. That is a, uh, Pretty sweet crankbait. And last but not least, Bass and Buds John in Lindia down at Smallwater Charters recently sent me some lures and we're gonna take on a Michael Bacon to see if perhaps we can soup some of them up. First one is a crankbait of sorts. I think it's missing the tail or a rear hook. Here's a nice whopper stopper. Missing some hooks. And we've got this. A beautiful spotted ape topwater from Jim Pfeffer. This bait has definitely seen better days and I'm curious if Michael has the hardware to soup this thing up. In addition to that, a while back, John sent me this. How long ago did he send it? Oof, nine of 22. It's been that long since I've been to Bacon's. But in here, I haven't opened it up, but apparently these are some more baits uh, to get worked on at Bacon's, and also one that I think is gonna be a gift from Michael, from John, a year later, because of me. But we'll open it now, because I kinda wanna know what we're getting into tomorrow. I'm a little scared here. All right, so we've got, oh, one, two, all right, three baits in some paper towels. <laughs> oh, ho, 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 ho. wow. That is a beautiful specimen. Look at that. Oh, man. Woo. What a good looking bait. Clearly missing the rear spinner and treble, but you might be able to get that one working. Oh, man. Look at this. Is that a different color or is that just aged? It's almost bronze. Look how different the two of those look. Oh my goodness. Another Jim Pfeffer minnow and this one might just be complete. Wow. And, ooh, look at that little crankbait. That thing doesn't need any work, that just needs to be fished. Ooh, good looking, good looking little bait. Wow. Well, we uh, have our work cut out for us tomorrow at Bacon's. Look at those three baits. Oh man, so gorgeous. I'm, uh, I'm just excited to show these to Michael and if he could do anything to them to get them operational again, if I recall correctly, I think John's plan was to leave one with me, leave one with Michael, and have one go back to Florida with John. <laughs> wow.
Good morning, everybody. Uh, we are just pulling in to Bacon's Tackle in Shreveport, Louisiana. Michael and his wife were kind enough to put me up in their family Airbnb last night in Shreveport. I got into town late after hanging out with Daniel over at D's Tackle Box. And I was anxious to get up this morning to make a stop at Bacon's. I showed you guys last night, we do have a pretty long checklist of things I want to accomplish here at Bacon's. And I've got a feeling that this is gonna be its own episode, if not like two, we'll see how it goes. So we're gonna head on inside. Michael Bacon said he's gonna get here early. We're gonna hang out a little bit and I'm gonna get back on the road and continue uh, eastbound and down. <laughs> got a few things. First is this, which... See, this I got came... a whole box of these. You do have a whole box of those. I think somewhere, I did. So what is your guess as to what you think that is? You got it from, where'd you get that, from cotton? Yeah, I think I got a box from cotton, or it could have come from Jack Smithwick, uh, because Jack Smithwick had a vacuum metalizer, and he, he vacuum metalized a lot of other people's baits. And a lot of times they say, hey, since you got it down there, why don't you just paint paint it black back and the red throat and all that. But so that's just, how it's supposed to be rigged, by the way. Gotta be kidding. With two hooks and a spinner on the back. This looks like, uh, uh, you bought it like this? No, so you- This looks you, like aftermarket. You put that in. That's what I thought. But I researched it. I thought it was initially three hooks, but it's actually two hooks in a spinner. Wow, I just put an H&H. &H. That's pretty good. That's a Bass Buster Lord. Really? Well, that's in with Smithwick. That's where I got these then. So that's a Bass Buster Lord that I saw in an ad, like on eBay. And you gotta be kidding, I wanna take a picture of that. Isn't that wild? And that's what it is, yep. Yeah, Jack made those. Jack made these, I did, I got so much stuff. So I think it's, a, my guess is it's a schooling fish bait. Oh yeah, you can throw it about look, 100 that thing is, yards. It's, I've thrown them. It em. doesn't float. No, it <laughs> sinks and it's a, it's almost like a, uh, like a gotcha plug Yeah, or yeah. Wow, that is neat. See what else we got. So I got some other things to show you. So I was uh, with Daniel over at D's Tackle Box yesterday. I don't think I know him. So yeah, Daniel over at D's Tackle Box. He's a lure collector. He's a good dude. Mm -hmm. So he gave me these. <laughs> I know. What and I are. thought you'd appreciate looking at these. Uh, yeah. And my dad them, thought fish don't fly. So he he turned it around where the fish could see the actual colors. Because otherwise, it don't matter what the back is. That's all the fish ever sees. Isn't that kind of neat? So, yeah, it's called so it's upside got, down. It's got the upside down. I love that. So mm -hmm. the top mm -hmm. is white, but mm -hmm. the... Yeah, because fish can't... That's a tough color, huh? The, Ooh, yeah. I like that. What is that called? That all color. the fish ever see is this right here. Yep. I mean, they look, you know, they're not much different. Uh, man, I can't remember what they call this. It's, it's like silver shiner. They act, this is actually, the. they put this flake on there. I remember the lady would sit there with a the shaker and... Then at the end, she'd fold the, it had a big crease down the paper, and she would do the crease up and pour it all back into the deal, because about a fifth only stick to it. Wow. And then we were talking yesterday about the crybabies, mm -hmm. and you and you just have one hook on them. He had some of those. Yeah. And what was yeah. the logic behind that? Uh, it's kind of like the war horse, you know, the war horse. Uh, moss and stick-ups, you're going to have one hook. It's less stick up, I guess. Wow. And plus, it, it, it wouldn't sit straight up like they wanted to if you put a hook on the side. So that's that. Uh, let's see what else I got. Mm -hmm. So I picked this up for you. I've been into um, custom crankbaits. This guy, Andrew Dixon, makes these. Spotted ape. But it's, I've sort never of. seen a modern day spotted ape. That's what I'm painting right now. Ooh. Really? So I thought you'd like that. He is in San Antonio, and yeah, I like that. I like how he faded it. The, normally, spotted ape, apes have crisp lines, a crisp V, and a crisp. Cri everything's crisp. You know, I got a bunch. I got a bunch over there somewhere. But yeah, I'm painting spotted apes right now. That's cool. He did a good job. So then, my buddy Mark over at Digo Connection. Ooh, I know what I, that is. I've been looking for a fisher because I want to go catch a fish on one of these. Gee. <laughs> wow. That's a real one. So it is a it, it is a real one. He got it from a collection of a guy. 
it's got some lift damage. It's got a grease pen uh, writing, and, and I think it's got a little bit of... I think it's been... They may have did that. They may have done that at the factory. It has been redone once. Oh, that's what the R means? I, well, I'm not sure about that, actually. I don't know what the R means. But I know that it's been repainted once at the lip. And no, I it, need it, a little bit it's of... It's not 319. That's big O. And, and, the, and, the, and, and the O got... Yeah, that's big bit. O. Uh -huh. Okay. They, they took the small G and made it look like a backwards P. And there's a arrow there for some reason. No, he just, uh, yeah, that's big O. That's what that is. That is neat. Can I look at the price? Uh, repaired. Oh, repaired by Fred Young. So this was a Fred Young bait that he repaired? Mm, that's what it says on there. And so, because this one's been fished, you can tell. But it looks like it's, but this, whatever that is, is coming up. I know what it is. They used a different kind of coating on it. It wouldn't stick to that. That's a computer chipboard uh, bill. Okay. It won't stick to it. But that's the color, though. I like mm -hmm. that. <laughs> now, what did you say you wanted, you wanted, you wanted to touch this? Well, could we, I, I want to fish it. I see. And do you I want to stop to, the flag. Do I got to do something? That, yeah, yeah, you do. That'd be the it, trick. It, it, I don't know if we could do anything with that. If it's like a polish or nail polish or something. No, I, I got something for that. And then, so then we have that. And then this is a pack of stuff from my buddy, John and Lindia over at Small Water Charters. Ooh. And what do you think? So what about that one? That one stuck out to me is that color. Yeah, I've gotten baits like this, and it, it had, some of them happen to be in a guy that smoked all the time, and it came off real quick when you put uh, put ammonia on it. But this is this is a bronze color. Is it that white? It's bronze and green, which makes it look almost black. That's a tough color. So that's better, not... it, no, that's real. So, oh wow! So that's just the color of that bait. That's not... a tough color. Now that's other, real. That's not been repainted. Is that a pfeffer? Oh, uh, now there's. I, I've read all the books, and there's like Dunmorland and about three of them that made them. I don't know. I'm not that expert on. So this one that doesn't have a spinner. Okay, what? you need a spinner on that one. I don't know. Or is it that the way it's supposed to be? Uh, it's probably the way it's supposed to be because he doesn't have a, a back cup on it. Uh, most of the ones they put spinners on there, they got a cup to to stop the crease in the in the uh, screw eye. They put a blade on there, and then they put a back cup, so it it won't rub on the back of the. So bag. that's just got one cup, so that's almost just a, like a walking bait. Yeah, yeah. Now, so these are also, I guess, is, that, is, is this spotted ape here? No, that, I don't know. What, that was that was before spotted ape. Oh. I think that's where they got spotted ape from. I think I don't know. I mean, if you look at them, I all, call it spotted ape because, uh, but but that's the original pepper uh, colors. Before spotted day. So now, what are these guys missing on the back end? These old, two? old, and newest. Uh, they're missing a, a screw eye a hook and a spinner, and I got all that. I got the actual spinners that go on these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got the act because they're hard to find. They got they got the tits on them. This is kind of neat. It got a whopper stopper. Yeah, missing a hook, a couple hooks. Yeah, it is. I can fix it. So we need spinner, spinner. You don't want to do anything to that one. Nope. Okay, and I don't know what this is. I don't know if that's got a tail, or I don't know what that's supposed to be. <laughs> I just didn't know if you'd know what that is. Yeah, it's got, it's kind of, kind of uh, pop polish, orino ish. Uh, hmm, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. This little guy here, uh, if you want to try to fish it, uh, I need to go ahead, I got to take a razor blade and cut right here. Okay. And then and put a coat on there. And Let's that do way it. you can hang it, you know, till you get to Florida. Let's do it. Yeah, we can go ahead and start uh -huh. that. Yes, yeah, just you and Blake. I'm just busy. <laughs> oh no, it's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Had to glue an eye back on one of those. Happened to have one. Okay.
So have you ever done surgery on a big O? I do them, I do them on all kind of different baits. Uh, not a big O. I haven't because they really don't need it. Uh, unless you got a buggered up one like that. This has been uh, this has been painted over two or three times. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's uh, this is left over from the first, and it was all peeled off on the front because it's it hit stuff. Yeah, this has already been repaired at least once. A dentist <laughs> root canal on this one I must save your big O So what sort of lacquer did Fred Young use? Just lacquer, plain old lacquer. That lacquer right there, smell it. Ooh! It's getting hard to get. You can't get it shipped to you because, I don't know, I guess you can't ship volatile stuff anymore. I don't know. Okay. Ah, much better like this. This first coat's going to be thin. It dries in about 10 minutes or less. Oh, so there's one with uh, fully intact, huh? Uh-huh, yep. Yep. Can you believe I got the real blades for these? <laughs> I bet these are 60 years old. Look at that. Isn't that neat? <laughs> All right, let's see. I'm trying to remember which. Not a lot of tackle shops you go to in the U.S. that's got the real blade for the peppermint. <laughs> yeah, be kind of tough to come by. Let's see. Don't go to Academy and ask for that. Nah. They send them over here to me. Okay. All right, the hook's going to be a little trouble. Those are stainless steel hooks. Mm -hmm. I'll fix this one first. This is the cool part right here. Wait, what is that? <laughs> is that neat or what? Keeps people from having to screw them in all the way. I like to see where it seats first before I pull them down. There we go. All right, now we need the one hook there. I think that one's going to be okay. All right, you want it when you put the hook on. You want it where when it rides up against the when the base, it's like that instead of like that and if you ever see them put on like that you know they put them on backwards mm -hmm. 
This has been fished in salt water. They leave the, um, that's a little bit too much open. All right, you're ready to go. <laughs> All right, Unamas. It has been fished in salt water, though, hasn't it? Yeah. These hooks are these hooks are probably sixty years old that I'm putting on there. Okay, you ready? Perfect. I still love that color. Oh, that's an awesome color. It may have had one. You see where the cup used to be? I bet it did. Somebody stole it off of there. Ah, there's one. That hooks a little. You're gonna try to. You're not gonna fish with this one. You shouldn't, right? I wouldn't. Well, this, well that'd be our display piece. Yeah, for sure. Got the big cup on that's that one. Cast, there's one collector. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty color. It could be just from the uh, lacquer turning brown, but I don't think so. I might be wrong. Perfect. Cause that almost looks like it hadn't been fished. Yeah. That's pretty clean. Yeah, it is. Look like it's set on a wall or hanging from some fish in some guy's study. Okay, let's see. That was mine. That was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, now you want, you want to fish this one. Figure out the hook size. Might be this one right here. Yeah, I think so. Okay, that's going to take a short. Got him. That's it. Test them first. See if this is plastic. That's plastic. It is plastico. <laughs> Usually I should be working right over here, but I've got too many projects. To Yeah, definitely plastic. Not quite as fun souping up a plastic bait, is it? No, that's all right. Something about bringing that wood back to life is cool. Yep. All right. I don't know on this thing if it had a 
it just had a hook in the back looks like it could it could have been a spinner but I don't know yeah definitely plastic anytime you stretch these you want them out of the bait because the plastic's unforgiving I should have my wood deal somewhere. I'm trying to reuse your original screw eye. Uh, wish that salt water's worked on it pretty good. Got it. Perfect. Okay, what's going on back here? We got a cup. Little twig in there. Not much. All right. Ready to go. Oh, whopper stopper back in action. Okay, this one just needs a hook. I mean, a skirt. And this one here. I don't, know, I don't know what that needs. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is an original hook here. Maybe. You want to do a double or put a treble in the back? I don't know. I don't know what to do with that. Oh, I, I bet I can. I may have one like this somewhere. Hmm. I almost wonder if it was a, a hook or just something else. Like I wonder if it had like a little tail a little spinner. Or spinner. Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can. Might find one like it somewhere. Hmm. Well, doesn't have a hmm. doesn't have the raised tack on. I don't know. You're not gonna believe this. You don't. Some people don't ever think about it. But all treble hooks, or a double hook with another hook welded on there. See, this is the double hook, and they welded another hook on top of it. You can take a torch and heat it up, throw it on the floor, and you'll have a double hook. Just in case. Okay, we need to put a hook on this one. You gotta rotate it or it'll not act right. This one, that one had a cup on it. Let me put a cup back on it. There you go. That's actually pretty sweet. Oh yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Just feel it. Yeah. It's already dry. Oh no, it dries really fast. Wow.
That actually, and it matches too. Well, yeah, it's the same stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it just don't have the age to yellow yet. Okay. I'm going to get a little bit on your line time and go up a little further. Won't hurt. First time you use it, the uh, line towel have all the lacquer knocked off. Voila. What is it about this area that's got such rich history with boards? Because it's amazing uh, how many believable companies started here. What was there one that what what was the first one here? I mean obviously there's some smaller ones. What was the yeah, Tackle Industries started, Smithwick, Old Benz, Bill Lewis at Alexandria, Spinlil was here, uh, Evan Sporting Goods, they made baits, that was the uh, Flutter Jack, bring them back with the Flutter Jack, and then there's one in uh, uh, Monroe, the two in Monroe, uh, Mr. Castaneda, can't remember, he made the little fish, you've seen them, haven't you? Yeah, you made those. And uh, there's just a lot of fishing going on around here, that's why. Toledo Ben made my family a lot of money. When it opened up, it was crazy. My dad started boat building, fishing lure. Well, we were doing the fishing lure since 49, but he added to that. And him and Jack Smith went, just made a bunch of money. I mean, it's just crazy. Anything you made, you, we, had, we had 63 women working at one time, just making baits and tying skirts and thousands of customers nationwide the little little spinnerbait companies and all that dan butler was one of them i talked to dan before he died and then uh, of course the snack proof and all that but back then you could just get lures in in the box and dump it out and, and a week later you'd have to reorder two weeks maybe it was crazy you could order the wrong color and it, it that all just leave it's kind of neat <laughs> can't do that now buddy you better hit it right on the head or you're going to be stuck with it for years. Mm -hmm. So why is that? I don't know. It's just a change. It seemed like people had more time back then. They worked glass factory or some kind of job. They had their boat in the back of their truck with an outboard motor and a gas can. And then they would go gas up or get live bait and go to the lake, fish two hours, three hours of daylight. And come back home, clean the fish, take a shower, maybe some of them didn't, and get up and go to work the next morning. They don't do that now. The, the little younger groups playing, watching TV. It takes effort to fish, if you, but you got to like it. And they don't, I don't see that happening. It's just slowly disappearing. Hope not. Well, to the extent that you were talking about, no, it'll always be here. It might be rise up and down, but it, it'll never go back up there again. That's the other eye that I fixed this one with. Ooh, okay. Got that off eBay for like three dollars because it only had one eye, and then I spent a twelve-dollar eye <laughs> fixing that three-dollar bait. So hold on, I see some. I see some stuff down here. What's it? Some of those little, little, little doodads. Oh, yeah. I call them tadpoles, but uh, Smithwick, uh, they were, uh, let's see, Devil's Horse. He has on some, but they're really um, horse fly. I want to see that they, one. These, these are original. Which one? This one? So the original and then the one you made. Okay. So, so that looks like a bacon right there, right? Yeah, this is, this is a frog. Oh. <laughs> then I made a red white. Ooh. You think you can catch a bass on those? Ooh. Wow. So what was this called on the Smithwick version? Uh horsefly. Horsefly. Uh-huh. Wow. So what do you throw that on? You mean like spinning reel? Spinning reel, light line. You can catch big bass on those. What? <laughs> I see I see some Rolls Royces. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you like both of those? I made those yesterday. Are you kidding me? I know you're coming. Oh. Let's see here. I can get a Rolls Royce printed on this box. You like names and all that? Let's see. 
so you told me the story before. So what was the story again with this one, just for those who may have missed? Just to recap, a guy named Royce Jones made these for Jack Smithwick. He made his F100s, 200s, and toothpicks, carrot tops. He made them all. And uh, he was working on this style right here. What it is, this is a F100, I think. Oh, it's not a 200, it's a F100. And what happens, they spin 360 degrees to get that profile the perfectly round and he and he realized he could stop it i think at 270 somewhere in there and it put a keel in the middle and that keel really makes it do that and uh i don't know if it was an accident i'd have to talk to royce but um anyway uh pradco bought jack smithwick out and they just thought hmm they didn't want pradco didn't want to fool with anything new so uh Royce made a few of these bodies and still had it set up on his lathe and when I bought the lathe uh, he ran a bunch and so I bought it so I came out with the I didn't know what to name it you couldn't name it anything Pradco or Smithwick owned the copyrights to so I'm thinking Royce Jones and I'm gonna call that a Rolls Royce and I think it, that name just fits it perfect a Rolls Rolls Royce <laughs> oh, I cannot wait to throw that. Yeah. That is wild. That Rolls Royce. That's just the stamp. And hey. is this one too? Yeah. Oh, so that's a. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's just. Do some of them, are some of them different? They all have tail weights. So, tail weight there. It's got the stamp on it. Let's see. Oh, those are beautiful. Now, this one has a hook. So, you did something different here. You put the hook on the side here. I did. Yeah, what happens, it rolls like this, and then right at the end, it goes. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty neat. Uh, yeah, I think that's neat. You know, it does that, and then it, it slight, it slight twitches right at the end. And I just really think that's neat. Oh, that's gorgeous. All right, I need to get another pad. This is an original pad from Smithwick. Yeah. Oh, the ink pad. Yeah. <laughs> they just disappear. I don't know, they get moved around. It's not going to be complete, but it'll work. Rolls Royce. And then... Uh, I like that. Original certified Rolls Royce, a Louisiana product. We'll put that in the bottom. Where'd they go? Right here. That was one of them. This is one of them. There should be another one. I got lost it. Oh, it's easy to do in here. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I have been dying to throw these since, <laughs> and it's been what, a year since I was Has it been a year? It's, it's been, oh. <laughs> Are these just experimental baits up here? Yeah. Uh huh. So I see a Rolls Royce with some blades and then an, another Devil's Horse that looks yeah, like. Yeah, it's got, uh, it's like a dragonfly blade. Can you pull that down just to show us? That looks. Yeah, if I can reach it. So what? This is how it goes. <laughs> Pretty neat, huh? What made you think of that? I don't know. I've seen I've seen similar stuff. That, you know, I just I just copy other people's stuff and add a little something to it. And that's uh, like a flying helgramite, some kind of a. There's other baits that are kind of similar to that. I think. I feel like I heard that motto somewhere before. Yeah, yeah. It <laughs> runs in the family. <laughs> that's really cool. So wait a minute. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's made for schooling fish, I guess. It's a long caster, and it just kind of does that. But it really kind of does like this. So where did you come up with this one? Uh, I don't know. I just got to thinking about it. Uh, my son bought a house. that had like a, a box of 5,000 washers. <gasps> and uh, so I took a washer and... How do you fish it? Throw it as far away as you can and just reel it in. It kind of wobbles and kind of flops. 
I hadn't, had, I hadn't had a chance to really test it out. I, I tested it in my swimming pool first, then I took it out to cross. I still got to look at it. I may, I may come in and change the line tie to back here and have it have this pull in like this. I'm not finished. It's a work in progress on this one. And the next one's got two, so that's. Yeah, yeah. I tried two on there. Uh, when we're out in the Gulf of Mexico, if you have something with a lot of weight on it, you can hum it pretty far. And uh, the wood will kind of compensate for the weight and it won't go down so fast. <laughs> Hadn't thrown that one yet. Uh, a, that's not, that one's not very rare, is it? That's a cobalt. <laughs> yeah. I told you about that one I got at the garage sale. No. Uh, I went to a garage sale before I came to work and it was dark. I had a flashlight and opened the box. And he said, do you know the values of these? I said, yeah, I might know about all of them. I said, there's nothing real valuable in here that I can see. And uh, so I paid him a fair amount. And uh, I was driving to work and the sun was coming up and I opened it up and I was looking looking at the deal. And I looked at it and I saw that blue and then I went, it was in a box, still in the box. And uh, so I took it out, it was cobalt blue. Can you believe that? I didn't lie to the guy. I just thought it was a black shore minnow and it was cobalt. Was it this one or is it a different one? I think it was another one. It's still in the box. Yeah. With the low light, it looks black. I mean, what would you think you'd find a cobalt blue shoreman in a garage sale somewhere? I mean, they're, they're pretty tough. I don't know why they didn't make them very long, but cobalt blue is a tough color. I, I don't know. So Daniel had a uh, cobalt blue river runt yesterday, I saw. Really? Yes. God, I don't know if I've ever seen one. He said that was, he, he asked me to ask you about that. He said that was pretty rare. Yeah, it is. They're rare. Those cobalts are rare. So there it is. If you start swiping right. Oh, so, God. So that's his main collection oh, of headings. Are these empty boxes? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's pretty neat. Some 94s. Wow. Yeah. So, do you know yeah, what that is? I do. I do. Bill Lewis made this one. Red River Lure Company. The other one was Cane River Lure Company, and that was Johnny Horton. This is Bill. This you know you know the story about this. It became Rattle Trap. I'm sorry. Yeah. This this is this is pre Rattle Trap name. This is a guy named Bill Lewis. And um, yeah, Red River Lure Company. Yep, this is it was that was named Red River before it changed to Bill Lewis. But God, I've never seen this bait in my life. And I don't think that oh yeah, it could have been our skirt. Yeah, I saw the black on there, and I thought that was a tube color. Oh, it might have been. That was a red tube that turned black with oxidation. <laughs> yeah. You, you didn't know Red River was Bill Lewis? Nope. There's more. No, that's Bill Lewis right there. I mean, that's that's Rattletrap Company, the same thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't know anybody ever caught a fish on that thing. What's that one called? Short Snorter. <laughs> nice. Spotted Ape Smithy Weeks. Tailgater and a water gator. Yeah, that's what I'm doing now is uh, spotted apes. That's what I'm painting right now. I got to paint all these spotted apes and I got to paint all those spotted apes. So what was the story with that spotted ape color? Did it start with Pfeffer? I think he, he was the original, original spotted ape. So many colors. See this right here? It says spotted ape. That's all my spotted ape mask to make spotted apes. That's for the V on the bottom. Yeah, the new ones are crisp colors. They're not, they're not, they weren't phased in like that other one. See that? It's a crisp. Oh, v. okay. Oof. Spotted Ape's a tough color. Is that a uh, toothpick? A shoe pick? Is she, well, yeah, no, that's, uh, yeah, that is. No, that's the F100. Okay. 
Well, actually, it's kind of a mid deal that Royce had 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 a, had a whole box of them. They're kind of in between. They're not quite a toothpick, not quite a dancer. Would uh, you put a uh, blades on that? Yeah. Or a tail weight, depending on the time of year. So, is spotted eight meant to like look like a perch or something? It's, I don't it's know, a very I unique. Know of nothing that looks like a spotted eight, except maybe a dragonfly. May have some of the similar colors, but um, Pfeffer, I think, is the I would call his spot of day. The first one I've seen like that. <laughs> I still love this giant blinker. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's pretty neat. Uh, uh, dealer ring of bingos. There you go. Oh, yeah. Okay, here's some spotted apes right there. You see that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. That's a tub. I like that hook placement. Yeah. Now that's a toothpick, right? No, believe it or not, Pratco painted that ugly thing. Huh. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, supposed to be a toothpick. Okay. And then these tr these traps. Did you do these? Of course. Look at that banana lure. It's the only one I've ever seen like that. This one. This one? Yeah. I think I bought that off eBay. We're kind of too far north for that one. So that banana lure. So that's like almost like a crankbait. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, John Fetzer, he bought the company. He's here in Shreveport. Was still make them? He's dead. Okay. Uh, his son down in Baton Rouge has all the banana lure bodies. I wouldn't mind doing that, but I just can't do it all. I got too much going on. Yep. Is this a, a nip a D? It is. Nip a ditty. Look at that. And well, that silver really shows up on that one. Yeah. That may have been uh, Phil Jensen may have made that. Not sure the time on it and all that. But I pick up spotted apes anywhere I see them. Is that your favorite color? Well, that's, uh, they're all my favorite colors. Yeah, that's my favorite unique color. Aside from a cobalt blue. Cobalt blue is tough, yeah. Tough. You got any more blues in the air? I so is this the rarest of head and colors, this cobalt blue? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. There may be some rare ones that I don't know about because they're rare. But yeah, this is this is pretty tough. You better find that one. What's that? <laughs> we better find that one. That may have a cobalt. It was a cobalt. Yeah, I don't want to roll this wheel in this chair. Over nope. <laughs> I, I wouldn't follow your policy, but I, if it I falls, it's it. gone. I heard, I heard it bounce. It skip. Oh, there it is. Right oh. there. Well, you didn't hurt it. I feel like Ralphie with his uh, glasses. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, those are two cool. different shades. Yeah. I have no idea. No hooks, no nothing. Just well, get no. ready. I just saw them cobalt, so they they left. Wow. So where'd you find all this? Uh, I don't remember all those. These are just ones and twosies coming in from uh -huh. stuff I get in. And then talk about these. I, we did this. Those are so cool. Yeah, Johnny Horton Fireballs. Uh, that was uh, Cane River Lure Company, and Johnny Horton was a country western singer. And um, he came out with the Fireball. And I don't know of nobody that's ever caught a fish on one. And I got these from a guy named Claude King, most of them. Claude King was a Wolverton Mountain guy. Yes. And him and Johnny Horton fished together. And, I've got Claude King's uh, Wolverton Mountain on vinyl. Do you really? <laughs> yes, sir. You need to just live right down the street. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, Cane, River Lure, Cane River Lure Company made the Johnny Horton Fireball. And then before he passed away, he came to Shreveport. And uh, my family was going to make Johnny Horton Fireballs. Mold them, paint them, and, and then Johnny Horton would get out and sing and sell them. And then he got killed in a car wreck not too long after that. I was real young, I don't remember. How do you even fish a fireball if you were going to do Is it a sinking? Like a I've thrown them before and they're just a goofy little deal. The ball itself kind of wobbles and then it's counter wobbled by the uh, tail spinner. 
So it's just kind of just chunk and wind it. Yeah, but I've never heard anybody ever caught a fish on one, and even Claude King told me that. <laughs> he said, "Mike, I don't even know if I've ever even caught a fish on it." <laughs> okay, one of our systems incorporated. The best of my knowledge, this is how the story goes. Back in '69, we bought this building, and um, from Gordon Lambert, Lambert Industries. And then when we bought the building, uh, a guy named Glenn Carver came to us and needed a place to pour plastics. So we rented out from right here all the way back. Uh, Glenn Carver rented it, and it was uh, called Carver Plastols Incorporated. So he'd get 55-gallon drums of worm plastic and mix all the dyes and all that stuff, and he had pressure pots, about eight of them, against that back wall. Smoke coming out, and Asha, it would have been a nightmare. Uh, but anyway... Um, he started making uh, worms and then Cotton Cordell was linked with Glenn Carver because Cotton Cordell was paying the rent for Glenn and they were trading it out in product and doing God knows I don't know what all he did but anyway that's how we met Cotton well in 70 71 maybe uh, Glenn moved to Minden and, and changed the name to Mr. Twister and so that's where that started so uh, we knew Cotton. Cotton would come down. I'd go up at Cotton's, and then uh, then one day Cotton said, "Mike, let's let's uh, let's start Worm Bar Systems." You know, because I was selling them by the pound here. He came down here. He said, "Let's make a company called Worm Bar Systems," and uh, I said, "Sounds good to me." And uh, so anyway, uh, we made the little boxes and did the artwork of Worm Bar Systems, and uh, there were little bitty cubicle boxes. And to sell worms by the pound, we bought like five thousand dollars worth of digital scales and all that and loaned one out to each person you know if they didn't have one but they were all over the place south louisiana arkansas texas uh we would send uh four boxes fit in a master box and each box was approximately 10 pounds so it'd be 40 pounds a box and you know we'd send the black fire tail purple fire and all the different colors mean green back then and, and tequila sunrise was a good one and uh send them the box and they would double their money on it or triple it and uh, the scales that worms by the pound it kind of branched off where we used to go on all the sports shows and my dad would sell worms by the pound and he had a big old fish cut out with a hole in it and a person could reach in there and grab as many as they could with one hand and pull them out put them in a bag and whatever he could pull out at one time for one dollar he'd get to walk away with with all the, all the baits he could grab and that that got us to thinking selling them by the pound and um, so we did worm bar systems for I guess three years maybe and that's where I drove up to hot springs and would spend the night two or three nights every other week for whatever because I did all the loading and shipping and uh, got some good fishing in on that, that, those trips too but um, anyway uh, that lasted for a while and then we just got we had trouble keeping up with the sales keeping up with the different colors that were coming out and it just got too big and so we just I don't know we, we shut her down or we saw it we sold oh I know we did we, we gave some of the business back to Mr. Twister and at that time Toledo Tackle was coming on really strong and uh, then they ended up shipping the, you know the soft plastics so uh, that's the story on one of our systems and Glenn Carver and Cotton Cordell and I, I got that picture over there. I got Jack Smithwick, Cotton Cordell, and me all in one spot. So I kind of like that. My eyes are closed in that picture, but can't go back and change it. But I had a lot of fun with those guys, Cotton and, and Jack. We got we got some good fishing in. I told you about the story about Irma turn the light on. Mike and I are going to fish tonight. Yeah, I thought I did. Anyway, uh, I'll be doing worm bar at uh, Kaufman Drive up in Hot Springs. And we'd go eat at Stubby's, or we'd eat, we had a lot of fun, we eat uh, barbecue and stuff, and then at about 4 o'clock, he'd call his wife, his no wife was named Irma, and she, he'd go, uh, Cotton would die, I said, Irma, said, uh, would you turn the light on for us, Mike and I are going to fish off the pier tonight, and he lived on Lake Hamilton, and uh, his backyard was Lake Hamilton, and he had a floating pier out there, and you got to turn the light on before it gets dark, because if you turn it on right when you get there, everything's spooked, so if you turn the light on before it gets dark, as the sun goes down, all the fish kind of move to it, so they're there. So in the evenings, we go down there and just most of the time smoke the fish. Not all the time, but most of the time. It was great. It was 
legendary catches with in cotton use six pound test yeah sometimes you see the bass they'd be about this big and they'd be upside down just you know well like this uh just sitting there with the light on you drop it down you see his eyes like that and catch them a lot of fun a lot of stripers would come through we didn't land all those they broke off sometimes six pound test sometimes four pound test but anyway that was my experience with cotton and that's the story of one more Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassoon.